Hello everyone and welcome back to Penn State Sports Night and welcome to our brand new studio in the Belisario Media Center. I'm Destiny Sanchez alongside Brendan Conroy and Carlos Garcia and we are so excited to be back talking about our MLB postseason predictions tonight for the remainder of the season. Let's get right into it. There have been a lot of rock star players this season that have been game changers. Who are some standout players for you guys as we go full speed ahead into the playoffs? So I'm going to be honest, I think we might have a new Mr. October, and it's Randy Aruzarina. If you've seen him in the playoffs, he's only a rookie. Last year was his COVID season, so technically he's still eligible as a rookie. In less than 100 at-bats in the postseason, he's putting up a 358 average with over 15 home runs, 23 RBIs. This is just what you want to see in the postseason. He's contributing. He's batting leadoff, too. So a home run hitter, a strong hitter, a guy who can get on base, a guy who goes the extra step nonetheless. As we saw in Game 2, he stole home plate, which was the first person to do that since Javier Baez in 2016, Game 1 of the National League Championship Series. So doing those extra steps, being somebody who can do, go the distance and help the team like that, especially in the leadoff spot, puts him in a great, great position. Taking a look at a graphic right here, a little spray chart, all these hits are what he has been able to produce, like I said, in under 100 at-bats. So you see those home runs? It's a lot more than a lot of the other players are getting, so he's doing exactly what they need. With guys like him and Wander Franco leading the team, they're in a good spot for next year and the years to come. Well, Brandon, I'm going to stay in the same series, and I'm going to go with a Red Sox player that has been a pivotal part of their offense, center fielder Kike Hernandez. Right now, he has the MLB record for eight hits over a two-game span in a single postseason series. He also has the potential to break another MLB record after he had eight straight at, or seven straight at-bats with a hit. That record is eight, held by Juan Pierre and several other guys. And on top of that, if that wasn't enough for you, he has the potential to break a third record in the league after he tied the Red Sox record for five straight at or five season postseason at bats uh, with a double more than more than a single. So right now, Kike Hernandez, he's carrying the load for the Red Sox, and that's a huge part of why they're able to advance and have a 2-1 lead over the Rays right now. A Rosarina has been a player I've had my eye on since the beginning of the season. He is a spark plug for the Rays. Someone else I've had my eye on is Max Scherzer. He has the force that can shut down an entire offense. Um, he's the reason why the Dodgers trade for him back in July. And he has World Series experience, as he did win with the Nats, and the um, Bullpen really is going to be key for this postseason. The American League has provided quite a wild ride this past week. A lot of teams around the league are hungry, and it's looking like this postseason is turning into a slugfest. Carlos, talk to me about the AL. Well, for the ALCS, I think the two teams that are going to match up have to be the Houston Astros and the Boston Red Sox. I talked about how Kike Hernandez is carrying the load right now for the Red Sox, and they're a team that not only is benefiting from his success in the postseason, but a lot of other guys, role players that have able to been carry that load on the offensive and defensive side. You have guys like Xander Bogarts, Rafi Devers, J.D. Martinez, Alex Verdugo. The list goes on and on, and that's a huge reason why they're able to have that postseason success. A term I like to use with them is that they have big bats. They're able to hit the home runs as we saw in game two they had 14 runs in that game after being down and they had five home runs huge at bats the other team I'm looking at is the Houston Astros they're a team that I like to classify them as a big inning team they're able to have a big inning that will shift the momentum of the game and give them a lead and I think that right now they have the overall roster they have no holes uh, Alex uh, or Carlos Correa, Jose Altuve, the list goes on and on as well. And they're pitching, they've been able to ride the coattails of their stellar pitching, which is why I think they'll be able to get, to get the win against the White Sox and be able to move on and they'll face up against the Red Sox. Yeah, I, I agree with you about the Red Sox. The only thing is, I feel a battle of the Soxes, if you will, coming on. I feel the Red Sox, like you said, they are in such a good position. What the Red Sox have in the ALDS is home field advantage now. They've had the last uh, two games at Fenway, obviously. They lost the first one, but in these last two games, they have come back. A grand slam was hit in game two right away. They came back when they were down 5-1. to one. They come back at home. You saw in the wild card game, Stanton hit it off the monster. Home field advantage matters for the Red Sox, and it matters at Fenway. They will sell out on a regular Tuesday, but they also sell out on you know playoff games, obviously. Every single time, the, the fans are always there. Like you said, Kike is helping out. If Devers can get his swing back, that'll contribute to their offense as well. They know what they're doing when they get on offense because, like, like Rosarino, they do the little things. They steal, they get those bases, and their defense is phenomenal. They're Hunter Renfro, all those guys in the outfield, Kike as well. They're just in a great spot. And with the White Sox... I think it's the Astros' time to fall. We've seen the Astros, they have big bats, yeah, they have great offense, but coming in uh, to a 2-1 lead for the Astros, 
it's going to be tough. I feel a 2-2 tie coming up. Uh, unfortunately, it was postponed, but Radon coming in to pitch for the White Sox, people forget the White Sox can pitch. People sleep on the White Sox. They forget they have Tim Anderson. They have that excitement. They have that guy, right? People forget that they're actually a playoff caliber team. They had a great season. The Astros, yeah, their offense is amazing, but I have some faith in these White Sox, and we're going to see a battle of the Soxes coming up for the American League Championship Series. Um, so shifting over to the NL, there's a lot of grit amongst these teams. The outcome can be lots of different ways, depending on different factors with pitching and hitting. So talk to me about the NL. So although Max Scherzer may have two different colored eyes, as some people know, that does not stop him from seeing the strike zone. He, since coming to the Dodgers, has put up a 7-0 record in eight, and has 89 strikeouts in only those seven games. So he has, or 11 games rather, he's pitched 11 games for the Dodgers, 7-0, and and has 89 strikeouts, putting up phenomenal numbers. What you want to see leading, or heading into the postseason, he won the wild card game. The Dodgers are a powerhouse. They fell to the Giants in game one, but immediately tied it back up. In game two, every single player other than Justin Turner had a hit. Even Julio Urias, their pitcher, was the first one to get them a run. So their Dodgers just are stacked. Their bullpen goes deep. They have the pitching, obviously, with Scherzer, with Kershaw, even though he flops in the playoffs, he in October rather, he is still the playoff caliber guy you want on the mound. I think they're going to be matching up against the Braves. I'm going to be honest. I, I know people have a lot of faith in the Brewers to come back. Christian Yelich just isn't doing it. Corbin Burns, yeah, he may be the ERA leader. Yeah, he could win Cy Young. But when you're playing a team like the Braves, it, you know, you want to have your guys doing great. We got Albies on the Braves. We have Freeman. We have those powerhouses. Anderson on the mound. These guys, Anderson, a young guy too, still making good effort. You see pitching, and when pitching is good, that team is good. So I feel like the Braves, I don't know how they're going to do against the Dodgers, but I feel like we're going to see a little L.A.-Atlanta matchup for the National League. Well, I'm going to agree with you. I mean, I think that no doubt for the Dodgers, the potential is there, right? After acquiring Trey Turner and Max Scherzer in July, they were able to boost their already favorite World Series odds. I think that nobody, no team in the league can match up with their pitching, their hitting, their defense. I just think that they're a powerhouse team, and they're going to look at a back-to-back. -back. I'm going to go with a surprise here pick, and I'm going to go with a team that, although I have faith in the Braves, and they're up 2-1 right now in the series, I'm going to go with the surprise pick, and I'm going to go with the Brew Crew. I think that they're going to be able to pull it out. Milwaukee's going to be able to come back, and they're really riding, like you mentioned, Corbin Burns. He's their ace. He's been that guy for the whole year and for this team. He's been able to be a huge part of their success and why they're winning, why they're in the postseason. He had a little bit of trouble in game one, only seven pitches into that game. He had a guy, he had runners on second and third, so he got into a jam, but he was able to escape. So I think he's able to correct his mistakes and get back on, the, on, on pace for the Brewers. I think the only problem is if Christian Yelich, he needs his bat to wake up, right? He hasn't returned to his MVP form since winning a couple years ago. So if those bats can wake up for not only Yelich, but the rest of the Brewers, I think they'll be fine because they have guys like Corbin Burns and the rest of that pitching staff that's going to carry them into the postseason. So that's why I think they're going to match up against the Dodgers in the NLCS. You know, October is such a great month for baseball. And after last year's COVID season, I don't know about you guys, but I'm ready for some October baseball. Thank you for tuning into this edition of Penn State Sports Night. Stay tuned for more MLB content, as I'll predict we'll have tons to talk about as the weeks unfold. For Brendan Conroy and Carlos Garcia, I'm Destiny Sanchez. Have a great night. Thank you for watching this edition of Penn State Sports Night. If you're a fan of our content, please be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more clips. Also, follow us on Twitter at PSSN TV and on Instagram at PSU Sports Night to keep up with all the action. For all my colleagues, we are Penn State Sports Night.